eyes. That is, we can't see with our naked eyes. We have to take help of a microscope in order to see them. So they are so small. Right now, they are called as they are having a micro size. Micro means extremely small. Something that is extremely small that is called as micro. Getting it? <clears throat> so the organisms which are too small to be seen without a microscope, they are called as micro organisms. Getting it now? <clears throat> also, uh, Khadija, I did told you about the five kingdom classification of different living organisms on Earth. Did you recall? Can you recall what I told you? Yes, Khadija. Hello. Khadija, am I audible? You okay? She hasn't joined from mic. Khadija, turn on your mic. Uh, like join your mic. We haven't joined your mic to the class. Anyways, so <clears throat> I was basically telling in the previous class that different kind of living organisms on Earth can be categorized, namely into five groups. Like you have the group of plants. Right now you have group of animals. Here we are calling group as kingdom. Like you keep all the you count all the plants, whether it be shrubs, herbs, whether it be creepers, whether it be climbers, whether it be huge trees. Huh? All of them are put under one kingdom called as plant kingdom. Different living organisms. have been grouped like you have got the plant kingdom by kingdom don't relate it with the kingdom of a king or a queen okay now it's a different thing basically group of plant is being called as plant kingdom then you have got animal kingdom right now these are the major kingdoms which we know of but apart from these two also there are some more kingdoms like you have got kingdom monera monera kingdom protista kingdom and you have fungi kingdom so in total how many kingdoms are there like there is 1 2 3 4 and 5 just keep on listening to what I'm saying. There's no need to write these things down. Okay, now this is just for a general information. Okay, now Sundu San Khadija. So the different living organisms on Earth have been grouped into different groups called as the kingdoms, namely plant kingdom, animal kingdom, monera, protista, and fungi kingdom. Now you will be able to see majority of the organisms that belong to the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. Whether it be aquatic, whether it be um, terrestri uh, terrestrial, so you will be able to see it without the help of a microscope. But talking about most of the organisms or almost all of the organisms that belong to these kingdoms, which like Monera, uh, one minute, hmm. which belong to the Monera kingdom, Protista kingdom, or Fungi kingdom. So in order to look at them, you need to take help of a microscope. Getting it, guys. Is it clear so far? Uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a different chapter going on in my school called Conservation of Plants and Animals. So I was wondering if we have that or not. Oh, we have that chapter in the syllabus. Conservation okay. of Plants and Animals. I believe it is, uh, I think, fifth sixth or maybe uh, I think like it's eighth chapter I, I think what's the numbering of that chapter uh, I think it's chapter five <clears throat> okay uh, do one thing in a Khadija uh, uh, so, uh, what about the first chapter crop production and management uh, we don't have uh, we didn't start that yet that chapter hasn't been started. So the first chapter that has been started is conservation of plants and animals. Yes. Okay. Probably this chapter will also be taught. Maybe after the ongoing chapter or maybe after a few 
chapters this chapter is also going to be taught in your school okay na so uh, what you need to do now after the class have you got the syllabus by the way uh no not yet not yet okay kindly do one thing get in touch with your teacher and kindly ask him or her about the syllabus of the first term okay na like usually the, uh, teachers are usually aware of what the syllabus is going to be you may be notified later on you guys will be notified later on regarding the syllabus but teachers usually know what the syllabus is going to be getting it for teacher what i'm trying to say so get in touch with your teacher and ask them like can you please tell me which chapters uh, are probably going to be in the first term syllabus will you do that oh uh, yes <laughs> so do this so that i get an idea like which chapters are going to be part of your exam okay and sundosh i think you are okay with any chapter which we do ha yes mm -hmm. you are okay with it na no? okay okay uh maybe like few other students will also be joining this batch in the time to come today i think like there was a new student who was going to join but it's already 15 minutes past okay na no? so we can start with that chapter if you guys say conservation of plants ha huh? yes so and so you okay with that yes okay na no? okay okay also i will have to na no, like uh, get in touch with the team um so maybe there's a slight possibility that uh, in the next class we might continue with the same chapter microorganisms friends and so but let's do one thing like the chapter conservation of plants and animals it's a short chapter it's not a very lengthy chapter getting it now so basically in that chapter there's a story uh, with the help of that story you guys will be studying few important things there's a reservoir so we'll be studying about that anyways just give me one minute let me get that slide then we will be continuing Yeah, is the slide visible? Yes. Conservation of plants and animals. So you guys tell me, like, uh, why there's a need to study this chapter? I mean to say that why we are studying about conservation of plants and animals. What is the need? Hmm? You guys think so of it. so we can learn how to conserve them and stuff so we can learn how to conserve okay that is one aspect of the chapter like we are going to learn the ways how to conserve the uh, animals conserve the plants but what is the need to study this chapter because humans have done so much of damage to the nature Ah, uh, like if Earth were to be left undisturbed, if suppose the whole human population were to be wiped off from the face of Earth, <clears throat> try to understand this. If all the population of of let's say if all the humans were to die, so then what will happen? Uh, like in a uh, in few days, all the domesticated pets will start to die. First of all, then after that, what will happen? uh you see all the nuclear power plants huh they will start to explode because they have to be maintained from time to time so nuclear power plants will start to um, explode right now. then after what will happen uh probably from uh, 50000 years from now on what will happen the plastics will finally start to decompose plastics will start to decompose when 50000 years from now getting it now and then 
most of the cities will be reclaimed by the forest i mean to say that most of the cities that you see after almost a few thousand years like 50 to 60000 years right now so after that much period of time the cities will now be converted into forest and then finally you will see that uh, <coughs> probably a million year <coughs> you will get to see that the damage that has been done on the climate of the planet earth will start to return back to its original form so by this just you can understand the scale of damage that we humans have done to the planet earth so in on planet earth we have damage both the biotic and abiotic components biotic means that which is living component of earth plants animals microorganisms these are the living components abiotic are the rock soil water air etc everything that is uh, an unalive that is not alive getting it guys hmm? what i'm trying to say so there by looking at the severity of the problem how much of damage we have caused to the planet earth so thereby it becomes essential that we study about conservation of the plants and animals so in the chapter what we are going to be discussing let me give you an overview of it so we'll be talking about uh, deforestation what is deforestation deforestation by the way anyone sundas khadija yes what is deforestation it's a simple term you guys must be hearing of it uh <clears throat> yeah so this yeah khadija uh it's caused due to forest fires it can be caused due to forest fire okay main reason is cutting the wood for getting timber right now main is like forest fire is a natural cause of losing losing a forest but majority of the forest are being cut down by the humans in order to make furniture in order to make paper huh in order to obtain uh, to, in order to use it for a variety of different purposes so forest are being cut down like for matchstick huh getting it now huh? so there's a lot of products which uh, is made from woods so in order to uh, for that purpose woods are being cut down basically plants are being cut down so deforestation is basically large scale cutting down of the forest in order to obtain timber from it what the consequences of deforestation are we are going to study that how deforestation has damaged the planet earth so in this like suppose the home if the homes of people are being demolished so they their habitat is being taken from them now hmm? their shelter is being taken away from them so their survival will be in danger similarly the birds started nesting on the plants uh, and um, different type of organisms that There's are surviving in the forest very good so the soil erosion will also happen right now so there are so many consequences of deforestation hmm? so in considering that we study about conservation of forest and wildlife how we can conserve the forest and the wildlife one thing is called as prevent uh, preservation another thing is conservation both are two similar uh, both are two different words preservation and conservation getting it like conservation basically means that you are protecting it in such a manner that <clears throat> you are not using it excessively you are not exploiting it excessively huh like for example if i am cutting some wood from the forest i will ensure that i plant some new trees also so thereby i am maintaining the balance 
getting it guys so that is not a exploitation of forest but if you keep on cutting all the trees so thereby you are um exploiting the natural resources and causing harm to the wildlife also so conservation of forest and wildlife basically means that you it's not like you stop taking your essential use uh, essential items from the forest no you will be taking resources from the forest but you make sure that you do not exploit it huh? in place of that you also grow some plants you make sure you don't kill some um uh, endangered species in the forest right now so considering all this we have got some biosphere reserves also what are biosphere reserves we are going to be studying about these also so what are the biosphere reserves reserves are special places where different kind of wildlife organisms thrive they live there and it has got a very special role to play uh, in nature so what is the role of biosphere reserve we are going to study about that then we are going to study about different type of plants and animals na namely flora and fauna flora and fauna basically means flora refers to plants and fauna refers to animals okay now after this uh, you will find that some kind of living organisms are known to be found in a particular area only can you guys think of some such a species like there are some living organisms now that they are known to be found in only one specific area it cannot be found anywhere else camels camels ha huh? camels or wattles if you were to go to antarctica or the arctic circle there you will find a particular uh, bear polar bear Bad. repeat again uh, sundus uh, your voice is not coming clearly please spell it uh, um, properly and the one you said ha uh, polar bear good the penguins okay, no? also penguins also right now in some particular forest in india like in the panch panchmarhi biosphere reserve there is a reserve in india called as panchmarhi biosphere reserve so there you will find uh, you have um, flying squirrels are found there right now so such there are some kind of living organisms that are known to be found in a specific area only and they are nowhere else to be found right now so we are going to be studying about endemic species also <clears throat> endemic species then you guys must have might have visited wildlife sanctuaries or might have visited a zoo or a national park have you guys ever been to a zoo or a national park or a wildlife sanctuary yeah khadija sundus Mm -hmm. if you haven't you must visit okay na no? you will get to learn a lot from there <clears throat> so we are going to study about wildlife sanctuaries about zoo about national park and what's the difference between wildlife sanctuary zoo and national parks how are they different from each other so we have national parks zoo plus wildlife sanctuary ws means wildlife sanctuary so this thing also we are going to be studying about and then you have got some species on earth that are no longer found to be on earth like some species are extinct like the most common example that comes to mind is name yes. an organism dinosaurus right now very good so you have got extinct species also and some of these species their numbers are depleting at a very alarming rate their population is decreasing so like red panda like a red panda very good only few of a few red pandas are found in the world right now even the white and white pandas their numbers are also very few their number is found only in three digits i think it does not exceed the number 1000 i think 
ओके ना सो दो आर कैटेगराइज एज इन डेंजर्ड स्पीशीज द वन इफ वी डोंट टेक केयर ऑफ देम दे माइट गो एक्सटिंक्ट इन नियर फ्यूचर ओके ना एंड दिस इज स्पेशल बुक कॉल एज रेड आई एम राइटिंग ओवर है ओके ना दिस नॉट स्पेस रेड डेटा बुक वॉट इज दिस बुक वॉट डज दिस कंटेन so we'll be studying about this also like this is that book which contains like all animal information hmm. list of ha ha uh-huh. it consists list of all the um, uh, all the animals and plants that are in the category of endangered species okay now <clears throat> so we are going to study about that also and you guys have you guys even noticed that like um, in winters so many migratory birds you can see in your towns in your uh, nearby areas yeah have you seen have you observed this yes khadija sundus like usually in winters different migratory birds from the polar region comes towards the equatorial region are you guys getting it what i'm trying to say yeah hmm? so we are going to study about migration also also like this a concept of hibernation also it not in the chapter but you should be aware of that also like what is hibernation and why why do certain animals go uh, through hibernation what is the benefit of it okay now so hibernation is also there mainly bears do hibernation sleep so like Hibernation means they sleep basically. Mm, exactly, for it's a long sleep right now. <clears throat> you will uh, find that certain frogs also goes under hibernation. Some species of crocodiles also goes under uh, hibernation. You have some fishes also. there's a fish na that basically eats muds and uh, human and animal waste there's a fish that eats mud animal feces and um, uh, animal feces it can go through hibernation for a very long period of time so there's a very interesting story regarding a fish not a story basically i will be showing you um, i have like a national geographic channel uh there was a show on that fish so i will be showing you that footage of it anyways so these are the things now which we are going to be studying in this chapter okay now so do one thing kindly note these things down in a copy these are the contents of the chapter which we are going to be studying Read data book migration. I think there are few important other things left to be discussed. I think uh, there has to be this one more thing: recycling of paper. Have you guys ever recycled paper? Yes. Hmm. Good. Recycling of paper. So it's, it's a very simple process. And lastly, we'll be studying about the reforestation also. so note these things down you will write the heading index so hibernation you said that you will explain it how we will be now just like orally we will be discussing it in the class okay na not like it's not in there in the chapter so we won't be discussing it in that manner but for a few minutes we'll be discussing it <clears throat> note these things down and do let me know once you guys are done also from now on you guys will be making notes in the class or you have the option like you can take the screenshots also uh, but usually it's better if you note down the things in the class only which uh, which one of the method you guys prefer taking live notes or uh, taking notes after the class uh, i always take live notes live notes no and we just use note like if it is important i will write and if it is not important i will take a screenshot ha uh, basically what you whatever important things are there you will be taking notes of those things only right now 
so we are not our main goal is not like you can always refer your book right now but main thing is that we are going to be writing down only important things what we are going to be studying from the examination point of view so those things i will be uh, telling you guys to write down okay note this thing down you will be starting from here okay now from here and then this part start from deforestation I'm done. Done. Khadija, what about you? I'm done. Very good. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, first, let's discuss few basic things before we start talking about deforestation. <clears throat> As moments ago, I told you that the term conservation it basically means the process of keeping and protecting something from damage you 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 take only that much from the nature which is required by you that will suffice your purpose you don't over exploit it right now for example you can take a shower from just one or two buckets of water hmm? but instead of using that much of water people would be like using excessive amount of water for a bath right now <clears throat> so this is just an example so term conservation basically means the process of keeping and protecting something from damage i'm writing over here right conservation and right what what i'm writing over here writing to copy this the process of keeping and protecting something from damage <clears throat> so basically the conservation of plants and animals what does it mean it means that plants and animals which occur in the forest they should be kept in a way that they remain protected and they remain protected in their natural environment in which they are found right now so that is what conservation of plants and animal uh, plants and animals means right also you take only that much which will suffice your purpose now <clears throat> uh, if you, you repeat what did you just said uh, i say that basically conservation what means this the process of keeping and protecting something from damage in context of plants and animals what will it mean simply it will mean that you basically um, uh, it will basically mean that plants and animals you leave it in the nature in the form that they are found like you don't disturb their their uh, uh, their natural environment you don't cut down the trees unnecessarily you don't kill the animals you don't hunt the animals unnecessarily so you take only that much from the forest which will suffice your purpose also we make sure that if we are cutting down 10 trees instead of th that we at least plant the same number of trees or or we plant some extra trees also so that is what the term conservation means I'm getting it now <clears throat> our earth if you see that 
our earth if you were just look at the physiography of the earth you have got water bodies on earth you have got different type of water bodies like oceans seas lakes uh, water springs streams hmm? all these different water bodies makes up a sphere called as hydrosphere try understanding this thing say that i'm drawing a pie chart in which this sector represents the water body all the water body on earth so you say that this sector is basically is forming a sphere called as hydrosphere and the term hydro itself means water okay na no? term hydro means water <clears throat> also you can assume it that this is a spherical ball this is a sphere let's say okay na guys so that is hydrosphere <clears throat> then you have got the land also land surfaces on earth also whether it be plain land whether it be mountainous whether it be plateaus <coughs> whether it be desert then hydrosphere like an ice crystals also come in exactly exactly the glaciers the icebergs all of them will be counted obviously not the ice crystals in your refrigerator not that one basically the natural sources of water whether it be frozen water in the antarctic and uh, Ar arctic areas in the polar region or whether it be in the liquid form in water different water bodies like lakes ponds seas oceans okay na so that is the thing then you have got different land forms okay na for the job you have different land forms like you have deserts you have mountainous regions everything which i counted here so that is called as lithosphere getting it and then you have another sphere basically in which the medium is one third <clears throat> hmm. so you have understood about hydrosphere and lithosphere lithosphere is that on which majority of the humans are and animals and plants are there right now so it basically makes up deserts plain land etc then you have got that part of the earth where basically air is there so that is basically atmosphere so these are the three different spheres of the earth comprising air water and land air water and land now if you were to talk about the biotic part of earth living part of the earth so it is found to be living in all these three right now it is found to be living in water and uh, under the water in the uh, on the land also and in the air also so you will ask oh, oh, how can we say that they are found in the air like you have got microorganisms also in the air now right now like if you you have to uh, study the air around your room in your room you will find that so many spores of fungi are uh, they are in your room getting it so basically these are the three different spheres of earth and there's another sphere of earth Tropos. where yes troposphere the troposphere that is the layer of atmosphere no? troposphere stratosphere mesosphere that is another thing when you study about the layers of atmosphere then you get to see that the different layers of atmosphere are there right now we are talking about the division of earth the physiographic division of earth like you have how many major spheres are there how many major spheres are there major spheres are three talking about the physiographic division like the physical division of earth okay now let me complete this then you will be getting the whole idea what i'm talking about okay now so now you have another sphere called as biosphere the one that i've highlighted in this yellow color that is biosphere and if you see this biosphere is 
taking some portion of atmosphere also isn't it khadija ha huh, sundar so some portion of hydrosphere and some portion of lithosphere also so biosphere is basically that part of the earth in which living organisms exist ha huh? or which is able to support life so it includes land of the earth atmosphere of the earth as well as water bodies on the earth namely rivers ponds lakes oceans why is it so because the living organisms are found in all these three spheres they are found on land in the atmosphere as well as and in the water bodies also is that thing clear to all of you or not it's clear sundus is it clear yes sir okay no <clears throat> you guys attend your class from laptop or from your smartphone oh i attend from laptop from laptop okay if possible will you guys be able to draw this hmm. so do one thing after you have written this now after this <coughs> you will draw this you will give the heading as biosphere okay what i wrote it like after that i wrote something else should i draw after that after you have written this now the definition of conservation after this give the heading biosphere and then make this diagram and you will be writing what i'm writing here so you will write from here <clears throat> also like it just have has to be a rough sketch it's not like you will take help of protector okay now don't take help of protector or it does not have to be a perfect circle just draw it in a rough rough manner okay it is that part of earth in which living organisms exist What's the simple difference between domestic animals and the wild animals? Domestic, we can domesticated animals. Uh, yes, Khadija. Uh, they're basically tamed. Okay. So, and this. The difference between the both. Mm hmm. So yeah, they are like um, domestic. We can keep as pets, and wild animals we cannot keep as. Okay. No, you can keep the wild animals also as as pets. Like no, if... they are in zoo or something, we cannot keep it at home. Right? How can mm -hmm. we keep a lion at home? Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but if they are in contact with humans, if they were uh, they were to be kept uh, surrounded by humans for a long period of time, okay, now they can also be domesticated. Anyways, the main thing is that domesticated animals, as Khadija said, that they are tame. They are. kept in our homes around humans right now <clears throat> they are uh, provided with the foods by humans right now they don't go down to look uh, search for foods in the streets or in the in the forest they don't go go down to hunt down the other animals while in forest the animals are found to be living in their natural environment right now so also you will find that the uh physical strength usually of the wild animals are better as compared to that of domesticated animals getting it you can do a very uh, you can have a common comparison like if you have a domesticated cat okay now if you have a domesticated cat do you guys have cats <clears throat> if you have i used to have okay okay so if you guys uh, observe that usually the wild cats they are stronger as compared to the domesticated cats have you guys observed this like if you see fighting them obviously the <clears throat> domesticated cats would lose in the fight yes sir 
Yes. Honestly, <laughs> like if we are talking about the cat, the our cat fights better than the better than the wild cats. Okay, okay, that might have to be uh, have to do with the diet or uh, if you exercise the cats regularly. But in general, what you what basically uh, ob is observed that the animals tend to grow better in their natural environment. That is in the forest. Hmm. Like if you were to take the polar bear out of its natural environment and you manually uh, provided that kind of environment. Hmm, it will still not be able to thrive well. It will not be able to grow well. So the thing is that the natural uh, natural in, uh, environments is the best habitat for the uh, for the animals. You can't mimic the natural environment. Getting it? Okay. Is the, have you guys drawn this? Is it completed? Yes. Yes. Done. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so why? <laughs> Uh, can't zoos mimic natural wildlife and stuff? It can come close to mimicking it, but still you have created it manually. I mean to see that say that look at the uh, water bodies that are being created in the zoos. They are the base is cemented. They are put under the cages. So, like if you just um, uh, put some words in the cage and you put some leaves or you put uh, put some plants there but still you are you have enclosed it in a cage now it's not free to roam around getting it also animals they always are on move if you see in the in the jungles animals all, always keep on moving from one place to another but in a zoo their locomotion locomotion have been restricted. Locomotion means movement from one place to another. So their locomotion, their movement have been restricted in the zoo now. In the uh, nature, what do you see that? Like lions will be hunting down its prey. While in the zoo, will it do so? Uh, you said locomotion. Can you like write the term or spell it? Uh, repeat again, Sundas. So you said locomotion, right? So can you spell it or write it? Okay, okay. Huh. <clears throat> L O C O M, -M O T I O N. Okay, okay now. <clears throat> it basically means movement from one place to another. So <clears throat> their locomotion is kind of restricted in the zoo. Getting it, Khadija, Sundas. Also, th the carnivorous animals like lions, they are which are kept under the, in the zoos, in cages basically in the zoos. Uh, so you are providing it, uh, the meat that you are providing it uh, to the lion. So the lion is not getting it in the natural manner. No, the natural manner for lions to get their food is to kill the animal, to kill down their prey, and then eat their flesh. But here you have provided it. Uh, uh, here the animal is not being hunted down by the lion. So there are a lot of factors which differentiates the zoo and a national environment. Hence, we, in a true sense, we can't mimic the natural environment for the animals. Are you getting it, what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay, no? <clears throat> so that is the thing. <clears throat> wildlife here refers to both plants and animals that are found in the wild, basically in the forest, okay, no? What does ecosystem mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> First, now write the definition for wildlife. I'm writing over here. Okay, now. Wildlife, this term wildlife means all the animals and plants which are found naturally in the forest and in other natural habitats also. Okay, now. So, although this, though the term wildlife includes wild plants but it is most commonly used for wild animals and birds so keep that thing also in mind like most commonly the term wildlife we major um, most of the time we use it for wild animals and birds but it does not mean that this 
uh, does not include uh, wild plants it includes wild plants also but in a general sense when we talk with each other uh, and when we use this term wildlife majority of the time people mean wild plants uh, wild animals and wild birds are you guys understanding this what i'm trying to say so better that you learn mm -hmm. ha huh, i'm writing it okay now the term wildlife <clears throat> means all plants and animals that are naturally found in their habitats <clears throat> habitat you should be aware of this also like what is a habitat habitat is basically that natural environment from which a living organism gets all its all its needs fulfilled okay now so for different organisms uh, there are different kind of habitats for birds it's different for fishes it is different for different type of animals it's different right now <clears throat> write this down then we will discuss about ecosystem what does ecosystem mean also these are not few terminologies which we will be using often in the class so you should have a better clarity that's why we are discussing it <clears throat> uh so you guys can answer this question to me is diversity good for nature <clears throat> meanwhile uh, keep on yes. keep on writing also it is good huh so this what do you think <clears throat> <laughs> Sundus, what do you think? Is diversity good for nature? <clears throat> yes, it is good for nature. How is it good for nature? Yes, Khadija, explain. Ah, uh, because if the same type of plant or animal is in an area, and uh, uh, they'll they'll compete for, compete for food and uh, sunlight and stuff. Mm, very good, good point you have mentioned. Right now, also there will be certain other biological problems also. Okay now. <clears throat> so also we see that due to the diversity of life forms on Earth, different type of species are living. Like when we normally study about food chain, so we see that every successive animal is dependent upon the previous organism it's every uh, successive organisms are depending upon the previous organism for its food in the food food web also we study that that all the different organisms are dependent upon each other for their food food chain and web different food chain and food web are actually different when you have when you combine different type of food chain you get a food web in the forest you will observe different type of food chains at the same time right now <clears throat> so you have collection of food chain in a forest so it makes up a food web have you guys noted this down or not i noted it down good <clears throat> now let's talk about no ecosystem what is it <clears throat> sometimes we use this word normally uh, in normal conversation also like you say that the ecosystem uh, in my office is not good uh, ecosystem in my school is not good in normal conversation also we use this term right now but here what does it mean since we are studying it from the perspective of plants and animals so let's understand what does it mean in this term now <clears throat> so ecosystem basically it's a system which will uh, include all the living organisms whether it be plants whether it be animals or microorganisms of a given area often given area or we also consider the physical environment of that given area in which they live like 
<clears throat> they can be living in soil they can be living in water and under uh, li they can be living in uh, living under water and in the air also so basically i'm saying that an ecosystem <clears throat> as i said it's a system let me write it over here it's a system <coughs> in which all living organisms <clears throat> example you have plants animals and microorganisms microorganisms of an area <coughs> area leaf leaves in the physical environment namely soil air and water write this down and do let me know once you guys are done <laughs> also listen to what i'm saying <clears throat> also can you guys do these two tasks at the same time are you guys able to do this like can you keep on writing also and listen to what i'm saying yes so in an ecosystem what you will find that different kind of living organism will always be interacting among themselves through the food chains right now <clears throat> interaction is continuous taking place so for example plants they are being interacted by different animals like honey bees butterflies they come and sit on the flowers to suck the nectar from the flower the fruit and juicy a liquid from the flower plants are being eaten by the herbivorous animals right now <clears throat> so there's a interaction happening here then herbivorous animals will be further eaten by the carnivorous or might be by the omnivorous animals when the carnivorous and omnivorous animal dies so thereby they will be eaten by the scavengers like eagles fox uh, jackals <clears throat> vultures and when all these living organisms starting from plant and continuing till the scavengers when all these die then thereby their body starts to decompose due to the action of different type of microorganisms there if... is ecosystem and chain of food web are similar no no it's a different thing like in e ecosystem is basically what like for example um consider a wide area right right now like for example consider a wide area for example you can take a any wildlife sanctuary or you can take any natural area for example you take a forest let's say that uh, let's say in a state in india you have taken a forest so in this forest you will be having land let's say there are some ponds also in this forest there are some trees also getting it guys so in this what type of different living organisms can be found to be living like uh, in the land inside the land you can have earthworms for example in the trees you will be having birds start will be nesting in the ponds you can be having fishes you can have frogs you can have alligators getting it then you can have lions you can have giraffe you can have several other organisms in it so what you find that there is a system in which different kind of living organisms are found there like there are plants are there animals are there microorganisms are also there like in the land and in the air in in the air in the land in the water in all of them you will be finding microorganisms also so this is a huge system in which different kind of living organisms are found to be living in different type of physical environment are you guys able to understand this sundar so is it clear yes yeah, sundar is it clear yes sir okay now have you guys noted these things down or not 
Yes, so we don't need to just draw that thing. No, not not this one. Not this one. Only this one. Only write this this much. Okay. Not this one. Okay. If you guys are done, then that's it for today. We'll be continuing from the next class. Okay. Now.